Well, Anthony Lowenstein is an independent journalist and author of The Palestine Laboratory. That's a book on Israel's arm and surveillance industry. He joins us now from Sydney. Good to have you with us. So, first of all, the, is the US says Israel has remediated the violations. What exactly does that mean, since there's been no showing of evidence of any remediation steps, no really even explanation of details about what steps have been taken? I wish I knew what that word actually meant in this context, because they also said that they would continue providing weapons to those units, which pretty much speaks for itself. Look, this is really a case, I think, that we see over and over and over again. There really is rarely ever accountability for soldiers in the West Bank that are committing crimes within Israel, let alone the US that's funding it. I mean, even when an American citizen is killed, uh, American journalists, others, America seems to do very little at best. Now, why the US announced this in the last days is anyone's guess. My prediction would be two things briefly. One, there is definitely an awareness within the White House that growing numbers of particularly young Americans are so disillusioned with the Biden administration in an election year that they potentially will not vote for Biden come November. And secondly, there's actually growing um, anger towards Biden within the State Department, mostly anonymous sources saying that, but other people who have come public and say we're outraged by what the State Department is doing or not doing in relation to Gaza or the West Bank. And in fact, it's finally, you know, this is talking about before October 7, but certainly since, there's been an explosion of settler and Israeli soldier violence in the West Bank towards Palestinians. So it feels like a lot of empty words. Anthony, the US State Department did not speak about accountability. How much hope is there in Israel establishing accountability for itself, given the findings of several international human rights groups? I'm looking at statements. Amnesty International, December 8th, Human Rights Watch, April 4th. Even Beit Salem, the Israeli human rights group, saying, quote, Israeli authorities have proven they cannot investigate suspected violations of international humanitarian law. Cannot and will not. And that, of course, is the fear that many within Israel have is that potentially these sort of things go to the ICC or other kinds of international bodies. Look, historically... Israeli soldiers, let alone people higher up, generals, are barely, if ever, investigated, let alone prosecuted. I mean, the rate of Palestinians that are being killed or injured in the West Bank, again, long before October 7, but certainly accelerated since, is literally thousands upon thousands. I mean, what's so disturbing about this is that since October 7, and this, of course, has been happening, so-called administrative detention, thousands upon thousands of Palestinians have been arrested since October 7, in the West Bank, put in essentially black holes within uh, Israeli jails, and allegations, serious allegations akin to what happened around Guantanamo Bay soon after 9-11, torture, starvation, really serious allegations. So the idea that the US is somehow interested in dealing with those units, some of whom almost certainly are involved in more recent problems or crimes since October 7, and it's been reported recently Israeli officials have been speaking about the possibility of the International Criminal Court taking action against them. How is the US position shaping up on international efforts to try and hold Israel accountable? And it might be good to, to remind us, Anthony, about that US law that actually gives the United States itself the right to use force to counter ICC arrest warrants. I mean, one thing in relation to these, these ICC stories, we should take it to some extent with a grain of salt. Obviously, we may get different news in the coming days or weeks, but it's not really clear where this, where this is coming from beyond Israeli sources and potentially Israeli government ministers possibly leaking to the Israeli press to try to put pressure on outside forces, namely the US. Look, the US has hated the ICC for years because they don't want their own soldiers or generals or politicians to be put on trial for what happened, for example, in Iraq or Afghanistan in the last 20 years. This law that you were referring to was put in place by the Bush administration soon after 9-11, which essentially gives the US apparent power to almost use military force within The Hague, which is a different country in Europe, 
to free any American servicemen or women or others who are in detention. I mean, it's an absurd, insane law, which has never obviously been put in place. I mean, if the ICC brings uh, down And, Andrew, charges, it's allies, right? Not just for any US uh, personnel uh, issued yes, an arrest warrant against. indeed, allies. Indeed, allies too, absolutely. And, I mean, the fear, of course, that many Western states have of the ICC is very clear. The ICC over the years has prosecuted many awful people, to be sure, but it's generally viewed correctly by the global south as black leaders from Africa and a handful of others. There has never been an Israeli, American, British, Australian, general, politician, soldier in front of the ICC. So the fear that the US would have if this sort of thing happened against Israel was that they would then move on to the US. So if the ICC moves forward with this, with serious deep evidence that Israel is deliberately starving Palestinians in Gaza, let alone killing them on a mass scale, America almost certainly would intervene. Now, it might not be militarily, but they would sanction hugely the ICC, which the Trump administration did in the last term before Biden won office a few years ago. All right, thanks so much. Andrew Lowenstein there. Thank you.